So for some quick tips and uh, nuances to editing audio uh, within iMovie, we're going to uh, go over some uh, really quick uh, things you can do with audio. Uh, so if you have your iMovie pulled up, you can follow along or just, just uh, watch as we do here. So here I have my project uh, all pulled up and ready to go. As you notice here, I've got my narration uh, going on right here. Um, and essentially, this is just a project overseeing a forest. And so I just wanted to show you some things that you may run into as you begin to use iMovie, um, some weird things with audio and some different things you can do. So in this narration here, I have a narration piece that I recorded. This little line right here allows me to adjust the audio levels right in there if you feel like they're not loud enough or they're too loud. Um, and you can adjust the percentages right there. As you can see, you can kind of see the lines in here uh, where it starts uh, getting to be way too harsh of audio at certain parts. And you want to pay attention to those red uh, bars in there because you'll see as it as you adjust, it gets higher, it gets lower, and you'll have those um, those red uh, bars popping up in here. But you can also keep it down low. You can keep it here. I mean, you can do whatever you can. Now, the one thing that iMovie doesn't have is a reader uh, to show you... Um, uh, like how, like if audio is really harsh, uh, one way that I've kind of cheated, uh, to do it is I've clicked this little microphone button here and it's actually reading uh, audio output. So if I play along here and I just, uh, click, uh, play, um, it will allow me to kind of see where the audio level is and see how harsh it actually is. So if I play, I go in here. And it's actually showing me the audio levels there. And so you can see how low it is. So if I stop now, I got to click out of this and click pause. So I'm going to adjust this in real time as I'm messing with it. So let's drag this back here and I can like, you know, increase this a little bit. And I've kind of got that like 400%. We'll keep it here 300. Let's just test it right there. There at 316. So let's play. And then you can kind of see now this may be deceptive. You may be hearing it uh, fine and well, all good. Uh, as you, um, as you, uh, play it on your, uh, video, but the harshness of the audio really won't come through, uh, until you actually have like your headphones in and you have someone watching your video and you've always had some of those situations where you start a movie on YouTube and it just blares and you're just like, okay, that's terrible. Um, and that's what that's from is just not checking audio levels to make sure your audio is okay. So that's a quick, uh, trick there um, just to kind of show you there to adjust the audio levels now when you click on your voiceover recordings you'll see these options up here this is the easier way to adjust that audio level as you can see here um, and then you also have auto uh, where it can kind of like auto enhance it auto edit it and get it really get it really balanced as you can see it kind of balanced it out right there uh, sometimes that works great sometimes it doesn't so that's why i wanted to show you the other way to do it uh just so you can kind of see how it's done because you you'll rely on that too heavily and then one day you'll get weird audio uh as you go um now one of the other things here now i want to add um into this uh a um uh, background music set up here and so as i'm editing this uh you'll see uh, in in my cache here i've got this background song that i can add in so this is something i've already downloaded i've got videos that show you where to get background music and so i can just add it into my project anywhere drop it in there it is right there and we can add it all the way at the beginning of the video now something that you'll notice when i add that in is you'll see here that the um the actual like song that I added in seems to have lowered its audio levels. And then uh, underneath my voiceover piece here, and then when my voiceover piece ends, the audio jumps back up. This is a problem that many people have seen. And what you don't know if you haven't edited audio before is if you click on this video and you click on this little microphone, or sorry, if you click on this clip, my narration clip, the piece that's on top, okay, the very top piece, if you click on it and highlight it, you go up to the right here and you click on this little microphone thing here for volume click that and you'll see something that's automatically selected within iMovie that most people don't catch and this is this little checkbox that says lower volume of other clips if i uncheck that boom it fixes it instantly and now all the audio is back to normal so that's something that most people don't catch and it's very frustrating because what it's doing is it's trying to automatically make this lower clip here kind of like a background music setup it's just that a lot of times when you have that automatic setup like that the audio is way too low and then when you have spaces where you don't want the audio to jump like if i have a sound box here and then i have a sound box over here this space in between will jump up uh, it will jump up and get way too loud. And so that's something that you want to see maybe uncheck. And then what I can go in and do is I can highlight this, um, 
background music right here and I can actually lower this myself. Uh, and there's a couple different things I can do with it. Like I can uh, reduce background noise to it. I can, uh, you know, adjust the audio level here. So what I, what I prefer to do um, is I prefer to grab this little thing here and just automatically taper it down myself and then play it back. And you kind of use that same trick again where it's like you taper it down and you click play and then you just kind of see how your audio levels are performing there. And you can kind of see them. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid that red harsh like that. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want that red harshness in there. Uh, when that red harsh hits, that means the audio is way too loud. Unfortunately, this is not the best way to do it. Most editing apps have like a, a audio level reader within them. iMovie doesn't. And so another way that this is going to, another thing you're going to want to do is even if you're getting good re audio readings from that microphone set up there, uh, you're going to want to listen to it yourself. Pop your headphones in, really make sure you're getting that, that making sure you're not getting too harsh audio in there. So that was a quick setup for that uh, audio or that background music setup right there. Now on this clip here for your voice, there are some voice enhancing options and features within iMovie. Not very, not, not much at all. If you click this audio right here and you click these little bars over here, you'll see an equalizer and you can enhance your audio voice enhance. You'll have to play with these a bit. It's auto set to flat and you can always reset it. Um, sometimes it helps. Sometimes it doesn't. <clears throat> if you want to enhance your voice. As you can see, it did a little bit here. It's making everything loud again, uh, and that's another thing that you want to you're going to want to make sure you're keeping in touch with, and you're and you're actually uh, watching. Sometimes you can do like hum reduction and all this kind of stuff. It's it really really varies. Now, if you have an audio recording that has some background noise in it, it has a background noise reduction. Now, if you've messed around with uh, video editors at all before in your past, when you select this the more feature it has, like this automatically comes at a 50% reduction, the more you enhance it, the more robotic it sounds. And so you can always do a light tag, a light touch on it if you do have some background noise uh, within the back. Uh, but there are some stuff uh, that, that you're just going to be limited to. And really, the best way to get a good recording is to make sure that you get a good recording on the front end, uh, not try to fix it on the back. Sorry, there's, that still hasn't changed for anyone. Um, and so I have my little minuser here. I can minus out and kind of see my full project. There's my full project there. And I've got my audio, my background music. If I wanted to trim it off at the very end here, I can just click and then right click is what I normally tell people to do. Click split clip. And then I can highlight that split clip and I can right click again and I can uh, click delete. Boom. There you go. And then I, you also have a fade in and fade out option for music and audio. So if I scroll in real tight here and I hover my mouse over this background uh, music, this little ball that's right here at the very end, if I, I can click it and grab it and I can actually do a fade out option. And I can go all the way to the very front too. So all the way to the front, same thing in the front. Click that little ball and I can actually do a fade in option. So you have those fade ins and fade outs. You can do that with every piece of audio that you see here <clears throat> uh, for editing audio uh, within iMovie. Um, the more clips you add, like if I wanted to add another clip, I can add in a bunch. It's not limited like it is on video where you can only, there's only uh, limited to one overlay. You can do a couple different overlays in here um, and you can add as many as you want. Just remember the very top one, if you have that setting set up on that microphone where it says lower volume of other clips, it'll automatically lower every single clip um, underneath it. So you want to make sure that that is unchecked and you're good to go. Um, and then you can just keep... Um, you can check all three of them there, but it's normally just your very top one. Uh, but yeah, you can keep adding those in and editing those, editing those, and you can keep uh, messing with those as you go. Sometimes when you have clips like this in your uh, video where they actually have audio built in, you can go ahead and zoom in here, and you'll see here I've got audio built in right here. Now this audio uh, is came in the clip, and there's a couple different things you can do here. I have it already turned up all the way to 400. Um, now, if you want to edit this audio or filter it, you can actually just turn audio all the way down. But if you wanted to try and capture it, or you can exp uh, you can edit it just right there like you did these other audio clips. It has all the options right here. Also, you can actually detach. If you right-click your mouse on the video, you can actually detach audio from the clip, and it will separate the audio and place it beneath the clip. This is the audio that just came from that clip. It put it all the way down in the bottom. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. So that's the audio that just came from the clip 
right there. And I can actually move it around to different clips and it's completely detached from the audio from uh, this original clip here. So that's how you detach it and you can move it around and use it in other projects. And really that's how, if you were doing like a narration and you captured all your audio and video into one component here and you wanted to add other clips over there, or you wanted to remove this or do something special with it, you can do all those things and just separate the audio and keep the audio there in place. Same basic principles as before. You can turn up, turn down, do all those kind of things. This is like a forest background noise that came with this clip. So what I might actually do is I might actually just copy it and then I might actually go over here and just continue to uh, paste it. Um, and I can do command V for the special prompt. And so there it is right there. And I can just keep reusing those those uh, nature clips if I really wanted to. But that's another feature there that a lot of people don't understand. You can edit the audio within there and you can detach the clips and use them on uh, different aspects of the project if needed. So this was just a quick, I just wanted to jump in quickly and kind of give you some basics on editing and fixing uh, bad audio within iMovie. These are some tips on tricks to fix those uh, bad audio setups and, and, and kind of messing with the audio levels. Uh, those are big things that you want to make sure that you're checking, making sure that those audio is not blistering before you upload your content to YouTube. Make sure you watch it back, put pop your headphones in and really listen. Listen for those really loud blips. Turn your, turn your volume all the way up. Or, you know, I don't want you to hurt your ears, but turn it up enough to where you can listen and hear and make sure it's not ear blistering and your mic levels and everything are not way too loud because that that drives people crazy. And, it you know, it personally drives me crazy. So, <laughs> so uh, for, if anything, do it for yourself. Just do it so you have better audio. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching this uh, this far into the video. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff to help the channel, especially if this helped you out. Let me know in the comments section below. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will catch you guys on the next one.